going to look at using verbs and adverbs in your writing. So let's get started. Have a look at the picture in front of you. Where do you think that picture has been taken? Yeah, you're right. It's on a racetrack. Okay. So question time, first of all. Have you ever taken part in a race? Well, hopefully many of you have taken a part in a race before, in sports days or maybe something to do outside of school. How does it feel to be standing in the starting blocks before the race begins? So just before you're ready to get set off, how do you think you feel or how did you feel? And then have a think about how did your emotions change over the race? So how do you feel at the beginning of the race? How did you feel when you set off, when you were running, by the time you got to near the end of the race? And then finally, how did you feel right at that end? So just answer those questions for me in your head. I don't need to write them down. But just have them in your head to be thinking about what it would be like in a race. Okay, so what is exhilaration? Can anybody tell me what they think exhilaration might be? Well done. Okay, exhilaration is a feeling of excitement or happiness. And we often feel exhilarated when we've done something that makes us feel happy inside and proud inside. And it's often a word we use to describe when we've done some kind of fitness or sports or a race. It's like that power, that adrenaline that pumps through our body. Okay, so... Our first thing today we're going to look at are some powerful verbs, okay? So I'd like you to watch the YouTube video here, okay? If you can't get onto it by clicking this link here, then if you go onto our school webpage, the powerful verb song is here for you to have a look at, okay? Because that's one of the things today that we are going to be looking at as powerful verbs. So have a watch of the video and then come back when you are ready. Okay, so I have got a sentence here and my sentence says her heart beat in her chest. Now in that sentence the verb is beat because the heart is doing something, the heart is actually beating. Okay, now this here is the verb in, in its infinite form it's the word, the verb is to beat. In the past tense and in the future tense we can change it, so it can be um, that it was beating as it's doing it right now. But I want us to improve that underlined word to beat, that verb to beat, okay? So think of the word to beat. What other word could we use? Brilliant, you're right, we can use the word pound because the word beat is also the, similar to the word pounding. So like when your heart is pounding, so the, your heart could be beating, your heart could be pounding. Your heart could be pulsating. Okay, so these are powerful verbs. They are improved verbs. They tell us exactly what is happening. We know that your heart beats. The heart beats naturally. Okay, but if your heart's pounding in your chest, it's telling the reader that the heart might be going quite fast. Or it might feel in your in your chest like it's pushing out because you're excited or nervous about what's going to happen. So our sentence, we can change the word beat and it can become her heart pounded in her chest. Okay, and now we're giving the reader some more information about what's actually happening and how the person feels. So your first task then is, can you up-level the verbs in these sentences? So I have underlined for you all the verbs. The infinite form is to go, okay, for the first one, okay? Went in its infinite form is to go. She walked is to walk. She felt is to feel and she put is to put okay so you have got to think of some powerful verbs that you can use to replace the word went the word walked the word felt 
and the word put. I would like you in your books to write them as full sentences. So you would write the sound of the clapping something through the stadium. Okay, she's something towards the starting point. But think about how the person's feeling because that's what I want you to try and get. I want you to try and explain to me how they're feeling through the verb tweets that you use. So press pause on the video, go and complete task number one and when you are ready come back and we'll go through task number two. Well done guys, you worked really hard on that one. Okay, so now we're going to move on because actually we now want to improve our sentences by adding in some adverbs of manner. Okay, so an adverb, remember, it describes a verb, especially adverbs of manner. They tell us how the verb is doing, okay? So here's a video for you again, a video clip. Remember, if you can't get onto it on our school webpage, if you scroll down, there is an adverb and adverbials video there. And I've also put for you as well an adverb of a man and match to help you. Okay? But we might choose the right adverbs though. Don't just, just choose random ones. So we have got the sentence. Her heart pounded in her chest. So we changed the word beat to pounded in our last one. So now I want to know how that heart was pounding. Okay? So the heart was pounding as an easy one fast okay the pace of it it was beating fast okay what else could we use okay the heart beated beat boldly okay it could also have beat fiercely okay so I've got a few different words there that we could choose. Now you can see that we have got two that end in ly and one that doesn't. Remember, not all adverbs end in ly. But if I was to put this into my sentence, her heart pounded fast in her chest. The word fast is still an adverb, okay? I could put her heart pounded boldly in her chest or I could even use the word fiercely. Her heart pounded fiercely in her chest. Okay, so I'm going to choose the word boldly. I want to say how the heart wasn't just beating and pounding normal. It was quite bold. It's quite, quite powerful. Okay, so the word bold to me signifies a powerful word. So my sentence now would read, her heart pounded boldly in her chest. Okay, so then, on to task number two. So, I have changed the sentences to these. These are now my sentences, but I would like you to use your own sentence if you want to. Or, if you got stuck on the previous task, task one, you could use mine. So, I changed, went to sword, I, ch I ch changed walked to strode, I changed, she felt to be imagined, and the word put to placed, okay? So I changed those words. So now I want you to go and take these sentences and add in some adverbs of manner, okay? Remember to choose them wisely. I shouldn't see just random adverbs stuck in there. Okay, so that's task two for today. When you have completed all your learning, please remember to email me and Miss Williams with your learning, okay? We do look at every piece that you send through. We do read it and we do check to make sure it's up to standard. So please make sure you are sending your learning through to us. We love reading your work. Well done, guys, and I will see you again soon.